What's up, D-Buzz? What's up, D-Buzz? What's up, d -Buzz? What's up, everybody? What's up? So, you know, I'm in the car right now. We still going to do real talk because when I get home, we're going to read out those emails. But y'all know, I always like to start off with, you know, chit-chatting with you guys and all of that fun stuff, that good stuff. Girl, when I tell you, you know what? They're going to piss me off. I always say somebody's going to piss me off one day. And I promise you, it's not going to be like a really good outcome. I'll be trying to remain calm all the time. But I swear to you, these people out here, they're driving. I ain't never been so scared to get on the freeway in my life since living out here. Like when I tell you it was really, really good in the beginning, I was on the freeway all the time, zip zapping out of traffic, you know, feeling confident, feeling my best. But girl, over the past couple of years, I'd be holding on for life to this goddamn steering wheel when I got to get on the freeway. Okay. And, and mainly be the 10 and mainly be the I-10 because these people out here in Phoenix, they just don't have no decorum. They don't, they damn sure not mindful when they be on the freeway. Like we don't do stuff like that. Like in New York, we don't do stuff like that. Our lanes are not as wide. So we don't do dumb shit. But when you have really wide lanes and you still do dumb shit, you should have some room for some makeup shit. Like to, to, you know what I'm saying? Like serious, like their, their dumb shit just super exceeds dumb shit out here. But anyway, how y'all doing? I hope y'all having like a really great day. You already know what time it is. It's real talk. We definitely got a sponsor for today's video. And I, I already made a clip of that and everything. You know what I'm saying? I already made a clip of that. Girl, I'll be prepared. I'll be prepared. Got my little fake tooth in. Okay. If y'all haven't watched a video of me creating the fake tooth, it's already up. I put it up on Sunday. So definitely go ahead and check it out. But you know, my little Amazon tooth, you know, mm-hmm. My little Amazon too. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I did get my tooth extracted last week and it was okay. Let me tell you. Um, so my partials will be in in three weeks. So maybe two weeks from today when y'all are watching this, probably two weeks from today because they said a total of three weeks. I was able to choose the one that I wanted. The partial that they were suggesting me to get, um, that they had me accounted for already, meaning they had already set the payment plan up for, you know, because there was two payment plans. Like I told you guys, it was one for like, if I wanted a bridge in my mouth and then there was one for if I wanted a partial. So the partial that they were making the plan up for was the metal partial which anchors onto other teeth. But honey, I don't have no other teeth to anchor onto anything. Like, you know, I do have teeth. Of course, I have teeth up here. But the thing about these teeth is they're crowns. You can't anchor shit on these. And I'm not about to let you. Okay, each tooth cost me at least $1,500. These are crowns, not no effing veneers. Not saying there's anything wrong with those. But these are crowns and they cover the entire tooth. So I wasn't about, you're not about to, you, yeah, you're not about to anchor shit on top of my crowns. There's no way. There, there's not enough space for a metal bracket to hook onto them the way that they are together. So, um, and then on top of that, when she showed me what the metal partial looked like, Tati was sitting there. She was like, oh my God, that looked like something from Saw. That looked like something Jigsaw made because it had all this metal on the top like that was going to go onto your palate on the top. And I was like, oh, God, no, I wouldn't. I couldn't dare keep that in my mouth all day. And it's crazy because my mom, she had one, too. But the top of the roof, the the top of her partial, because it was for her top teeth. So the palate part, like the roof of your mouth part, it looked like skin. Now, this shit was all metal. They was trying to trap me. They were trying to trap a girl. Plus, I wasn't trying to get no blisters in my mouth because I I was watching different videos. Girl, I was watching videos. People were getting blisters, sores in their mouth from the metal and stuff. So I got the flexi ones, which look like skin. Um, they were like $65 cheaper. Not knowing, I didn't even know that they were going to be a little bit less ex inex expensive. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. That's how I'm going to say it, less expensive. I was trying to make it sound fancy because I don't want my teeth to sound cheap when I was like, oh, they're like $65 cheaper because, yeah, I don't want no cheap ass teeth in my mouth. So I'm trying to find a way to say it less, 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 less expensive. Like, you know, not as expensive. OK, because they were expensive, too. OK, <laughs> but they were a little bit lower in price because they don't um they're not supposed to last forever like i don't know what they mean like they're like well the metal ones you know you could add an extra tooth in case one of your other teeth fall out on the top you can always add tea to it you can also do that to the flexi ones too depending on who you send them to to make they can create another slot for a missing tooth okay if you end up using another tooth all right i really don't want that to happen so i'm not really looking forward to that 
but I wanted something comfortable. And if they don't last as long as the metal ones, that's fine because a bitch will buy another pair if she need be. All right. By then, maybe all my teeth will fall out. Who fucking knows? All right. I don't know. But anyway, yes, you guys, what's up? Okay. Get my new partials. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm definitely going to share the moment with you guys. <sighs> what the fuck? I'm sharing the moment of getting new teeth. Oh my God. How lame is that? Right. Anyway, you ever feel like somebody is got a spell on you or something i know that's crazy for me to say and that might be like a far reach some people may feel like okay what's wrong with me am i going insane am i going crazy you know what i'm saying but have you ever felt like somebody at a time in your life when it just feel like everything is just like going downhill 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 and maybe not even downhill but just too much reoccurring negativity okay have you ever felt like somebody is just putting like a spell on you? Like seriously, I think I, this is how I'm starting to feel about a lot of things. Like I just feel like somebody don't like me, and I guess what? There's a lot of people that don't ever like me, and that's cool too because there's a lot of people that I don't ever like as well. But okay, so first it started out with okay. First of all, let me just say this: I really, honestly feel like my doctor prescribed me some medication that is balding me. I feel like my doctor prescribed me some medication that is snatching my goddamn edges, snatching my follicles out, snatching my hair out. And because of that, I have not taken that medication in over a week and I've lost sleep. I haven't been sleeping. So the medication that I'm talking about was prescribed to me about six, seven months ago by my doctor, my new doctor. Remember I told you I, I left the Adelante Health Center and I started going to a doctor across the street from me, Dr. Rachel. But anyway, listen to this. So about six, seven months ago, she gave me a prescription called um, Trazodone, okay? So it's an antidepressant, and normally it's used for people who have depression or anxiety. They don't really use it for that anymore as much. They usually normally use it for insomnia because it'll help you go to sleep. It will make you tired. 50% of people have um, fallen asleep taking Trazodone, depending on the milligram. So I have been, she has prescribed trazodone for me so that I can sleep. I'm not depressed. It's not used as an antidepressant. And I definitely don't have anxiety, not that I know of. But um, so trazodone is what I take to help me go to sleep. Because, you know, I've had insomnia for like five, six years now. Okay. But prior to that, I was taking this other medication by my prior doctor, which was also an antidepressant, which was also supposed to be used for people who have insomnia. Well, my newer doctor, Dr. Rachel, took me off of the original sleep um, medication that I was prescribed for my prior doctor and put me on trazodone. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm using trazodone. It's been like six months or whatever. Now, you know, I go to sleep. I've been sleeping good. Great. Okay. My other medication prior to that, I was sleeping good too. So, you know, I'm taking it, whatever. About four months ago, that's when I started noticing like my hair was thinning and it just started making me feel like it was thinning out. Not so fast, but it just gradually looked like it was thinning to me. At first, I thought I was just bugging out. Remember, you know, I did come to you guys and I was tweaking on it. Well, I decided to look up Trazodone last week because I didn't really understand why my hair is falling out. And now it's falling out in clumps, like excessively, Okay. So when I looked it up, there was a side effect of hair falling out. They say that it's rare, but if it does happen, it's going to fall out in clumps and it's going to fall out a lot. You can definitely grow your hair back within six months after you stop using the product. So the medication, excuse me. So I'm like, rare? What the fuck does that mean? I guess because some people never, you know, maybe some people never said anything about their hair falling out while they were on trazodone. So I'm not really sure how they know it's rare or why they feel it's rare. Maybe studies were not really done on people that lost their hair from it. But if you know it is going to fall out and it's going to fall out in clumps, where do you go from rare to if it does? And when it does fall out, it's going to be in clumps in hefty amounts, okay? So that is what it's been doing. It's been falling out in, like, huge clumps, okay? When I tell you it's been falling out in huge clumps, like when I know everybody's hair is supposed to fall out on a daily basis, but there's no reason why my hair should be falling out like that. When I tell you, like, it seemed like it took like a month for it to shed so much on the sides here to where I promise you it looks like it's damn near naked. Okay, I have to use my topic hair filler fibers like I used to use on certain sections of my hair because of, of missing spaces in my hair. Like, I can see the missing gaps in my hair when I brush it, you know? And 
I don't want to be one of those bald headed men who have like 10 strands in the front and they still holding on to that shit looking like, yeah, I'm going to brush this over and nobody's going to notice because bitch, you will notice. Okay. You will notice. And here's my thing. A lot of people might feel like, oh, your hair is probably falling out from wearing wigs. No, sweetheart. I don't even wear wigs like that. The only time y'all really see me wearing a wig is during a video review and tutorial. I don't really wear wigs like that every day. Um, I, I don't actually. Um, the main reason why is because I don't go nowhere. I don't go anywhere, so I don't really feel the need to want to wear a wig every day. Plus, it gets super hot out here, so I'm not about to be sweating to death over no effing hair. But on top of that, I just feel like I like to embrace my natural hair. I want to embrace my natural beauty. You know, as you get older, things change about you. The things that you like so much and, you know what I'm saying, just really like so much, you don't really like that as much as you used to. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I like wearing makeup every day. I like wearing wigs every day. That's the type of shit I don't like doing no more. Like, I don't, I don't want to wear a wig every day. I don't want to wear makeup every day. On top of that, I don't even have the time or the effort to do that shit. I just don't want to do it. I got other things to do in my life than sit in the mirror and always put makeup on. Now, do I like putting makeup on? I do sometimes. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. You understand what I'm saying? When I go home after this, um, drop off and finish the rest of this real talk, I may just go ahead and, and spruce up my eyebrows a little bit while I'm on camera with you guys. It just gives me something to do, I think, a lot of the times. But as far as wanting to do it on a daily, everyday basis, like I used to do, that's not something that I require to do in my life anymore. I feel like I'm just naturally beautiful and that's what the fuck it is okay and for those who don't think so well that's okay because i don't give a fuck okay but i just i don't wear wigs every day i don't wear makeup every day and i just want to embrace my natural hair i don't think there's anything wrong with that so that is not the reason why my hair is falling out i really feel like it has to do with the medication because of what i read there's nothing else the medication that i take except for blood pressure pills and that shit don't make your hair fall out i read and studied that too it don't make your hair fall out. So what else is there left? You know what I'm saying? I'm not stressed. And I don't think that much stress in the world should make your hair fall the fuck out like that. Now, granted, I do have vein disease, which is insufficient blood flow. And that may cause some of it, which it did, but not the way it's going down right now. Honey, I feel like somebody got some type of voodoo doll on me and they poking me and pulling my hair out and then knocking my teeth out at the same goddamn time. That's why I'm talking about. Do you ever feel like somebody is got a spell on you or something? And I hate to say that because there are people in this world that are known for doing evil shit like that. And I'd be trying to be the one positive person out of everything who don't like to think that way of people, but I need to come to grips in reality. There are people in this world that do some wicked shit, whether you want to believe it or not. There are some wicked people in this world that are known for doing wicked shit. And that's just what they like to do. OK, what can I do about that? But that's why I said, do you ever feel like somebody is. um, Got a spell on you doing something evil to you. And I hate to feel that way, but like all of a sudden my goddamn tooth fell out, you know what I'm saying? Which, okay, this was, I, I didn't even see it coming. I didn't even feel it coming. None of that. It was weird the way everything just went down. It was no signs of my tooth breaking off or anything. And I would think you need a sign for that because when my crown broke off in the back, the reason why it broke off is because they didn't seal it properly. Okay. And I could feel it breaking off. I could feel all of that. So this, I didn't feel anything. So this is why I feel like, is there something that is going on that I just don't understand? Is there somebody out there that really just does not like me and really wants me to be at my lowest point in my life? Like, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Losing your teeth is like a traumatic experience. It's something that a lot of people go through. And for those of you who don't understand, losing your teeth can be so depressing and so disappointing to a lot of people. I wasn't so upset when the ones in the back broke off because you cannot see them. But also, I was somewhat upset because I know how my mouth works. And once my teeth fall out in the back, my teeth 
in the front start to move and they start to shift. That's what gave me the spaces in the bottom. So now it's like, okay, I'm losing teeth and I'm losing hair. And we as women, we really feel like our hair is like very important. There are some people that be like, oh, well, it's just hair. It's just hair. Those be the same motherfucking people that got a whole head full of hair. And of course you're going to say that because you got a whole head full of hair. So why wouldn't you say that? And if it's just hair and it'll grow back, that may be true for some people, but not everybody. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I'm going to look good with a bald head. Like straight up, I have a long egg head, a long, long, long head. And I don't think that I could rock a baldy. Not that I'm trying to, but I really don't feel like I could rock a baldy. Now, a short, short haircut, maybe so. It all depends on my weight and my face. But I ain't trying to walk around here looking like Mr. Potato Head. And I damn sure ain't trying to be wearing a wig when I don't want to and don't have to. Listen, I, I don't mind wearing wigs, but I don't want to be having to be forced to wear a wig because I'm bald head. I mean, still and so, I'm not going to be forced because I got a bald skin head. But I ain't trying to go outside with no bald skin head. That just ain't for me. I don't really feel like I got that look of wearing a rock and a bald head. Now, maybe a little peach fuzz, maybe a little Caesar low might be okay. I don't know. I'm not really even trying to go there as well. I'm not trying to lose no effing hair. OK, but the way that my hair is falling out in clumps, like I could show you guys what what came out today. Y'all would be like, bitch, what? Like, yeah, why? Why me? So that's why I'd be like, I'm feeling like if somebody got some type of voodoo on me. I don't know. And I hate to feel this way and say this, but there could be mad people that just don't like you and do things just to be spiteful. I would hate to feel that way. And I know that's probably like the devil trying to plant negative shit in my head that's why i say i'd be trying to be positive at all time but i don't know i really don't know i'm gonna go in here and i'm gonna put this uh package packages these wig orders through the post office and while i do that we're gonna get into who sponsored this video today and we're gonna just jump right into this real talk okay So today's video is being sponsored by GQ. This is an Asian inspired perfume brand. I do like the way this package came in the box. Also, you can check out their social media handles as well. I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing the brand correctly, but from what I'm gathering, it is called Chi Q. So this is what the packaging looks like when you receive your perfume or your cologne. The name of the scent is Forest Child, and it is padded really well. It does come with a few cards or what have you. Now, this looks very masculine. The scent is very powerful. It doesn't smell bad at all, but it does feel, smell really masculine. Now, my daughter Tati said it kind of reminded her of like trees, pine cones, and such like that. And there are notes on the back for this particular perfume. The top notes for this is orange and black pepper. This is more or less a woodsy cypress fragrance. The base notes are sandalwood and broxen and tobacco. So that's probably why it's smelling a little bit more masculine versus unisex. Now this is a great gift for any guy, okay? If you're looking for something to give your man for any type of day just to say you love him, an anniversary, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving gift, I don't know, whatever kind of gift you're trying to give out, you may want to check out this brand. It comes in these really nice sleek bottles which i do like a lot this is very sleek it's very clean looking plus it doesn't take up any space at all then they have the top right here which is a more woods top this is a really sleek bottle it has a really great scent it's a very powerful scent and i do think this lingers on your skin for a while now when i sprayed it on my skin last night it just reminded me a lot of one of my other perfumes by terry mugler but then when my daughter said she smelled it it just smelled more like masculine and then as the time went on it does linger into your skin it does stay long but it does have a more masculine scent now some women love to smell masculine and there's nothing wrong with that because a good man's cologne could definitely brighten up your day girl or child it does definitely remind you of something outdoorsy and woodsy i'll link all of the information down below for chi q they have other perfumes as well i do like the way they package this i love their packaging boxes it was very thoughtful it was padded to make sure that your item did not come broken which is very thoughtful but as far as their brand i will link it all below there are some other scents on their website that you can also check out along with their social media so thank you a lot chi q for sponsoring this video
guys. So I'm back. We're back for Real Talk. So I decided today, this was kind of like not really last minute, but I figured I would switch it up a little bit. I'm going to do one Real Talk for today. You know what I'm saying? Because I just like to chit chat with you guys sometimes, you know, well, not even sometimes, all the time. Because if I say sometimes, some people might be like, oh, she only want to talk to us when it's good for her and when it's convenient for her, like, or something like that. So, you know what I'm saying? I just figured, let me just put that out there um, all the time. Like, you know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying. Anyway, there were some other things that I still wanted to share with you guys before we even got into the real talk. And I just figured, well, you know what? Sometimes you got to switch it up. So we're going to talk one drama this this week. And then the next week we're going to do, I don't know, maybe another drama. Who knows? Maybe I get into some drama. You know, it's just nice to chit chat with everybody. But anyway, so as I was saying about my hair loss, my hair loss, you know what I'm saying? It was the medication. I don't know if it was the medication per se, but I'm just going off of what I read for the side effects because... I took, I've been taking the medication for like about six, seven months, and I noticed my hair thinning for like four months. You know, it gives it some time to work in your system. So I don't know, but I will say this. Um, I haven't taken that medication in a week, and girl, let me tell you, when I tell you I barely get any sleep, I'm barely getting any sleep. Like, I probably get like four hours of sleep. Like, I really have bad insomnia, and I'm not really sure why, but it's been like this since like late 2018, early 2019. And I think it has a lot to do with, you know, me just getting a full hysterectomy because after that, my sleeping pattern was downhill. So the medication really was helping me sleep a lot. But I just figured like this, like, I don't want to be walking around bald. Like, I, I think I would just rather lack sleep than be bald headed. I I just can't see myself without hair. And like I said, people that always say, oh, it's just hair. Those be the ones that have a full head of hair. Like, yeah, you're going to say that. You can afford to lose some hair. Like, seriously, you can afford to give me some of that ponytail. Girl, my ponytail is getting real skimpy. And like I said, I had to use my filler fibers. But I did purchase this stuff off Amazon. And I hope I'm doing myself a justice, and, or at least doing myself and my hair a favor. So first of all, I did switch up my vitamins because I was taking these other vitamins that was recommended. And I like them, but the only thing I didn't like about them, and maybe it was the whole damn thing, the capsules just were so big and it would just feel like it was getting stuck in my chest all the time. And I'm really not up for feeling like something is just stuck right here in my chest. And I would rather have taken like a tablet, but I did get these gummy um, hair vitamins. Now look, they had really, really good reviews on Amazon. Like people were saying their hair was growing back thicker, black people, white people, you know, all type of ethnic groups. Cause girl, I need all type of ethnic groups to be saying the same goddamn thing. All right. So, and it was another vitamin that was like a little bit less um, in price, but I just was like, you know what? This has a really good review and they're gummies. This is a, I think this is a two month supply, two month supply of gummies, these hair vitamins. So I think, I think, what did I pay like $30 for these? Um, if you guys have ever heard of these, please tell me Sugar Bear Pro Hair Vitamins. So I have to take one today. I didn't take one, but I got these. I've been taking them for a week. Way easier to digest. But I just really sometimes be so paranoid about certain shit. Like, do the gummies really have the same effect as a tablet would or a capsule would? Because they're like candy. They can get like stuck in your teeth and shit like that. So are you really consuming like the right amount? I don't know. What are y'all thoughts on that? But then I also did purchase this hair serum, hair growth serum that I seen had 5% minoxidil biotin in it. So I figured I would get this. This also had really good reviews as well. So it's a dropper and you put it in your hair twice a day, you know, like in the problem area. So I've been doing it for like a week. Okay. And the only thing that I wasn't doing in the beginning was I wasn't like massaging it into my hair my scalp, I would just like take like a soft toothbrush and just like brush it in and brush it in. Thinking like maybe that'll do the same thing. Cause you know what? Look, I'm just going to be for real with y'all. I, I just don't feel like standing there doing like this for like three minutes. I just can't, I'm not like, I be having shit to do. I'd be just like, oh, that's just going to take too much time. So then I remembered. So then I remembered that this company has sent me this head massager like about a year and a half ago. They sent it to me. I never even got around to reviewing it. They wanted me to try it out first, but I never got around to doing that. So it was actually under the bathroom sink and brand new still in the box. So I was like, you know what? Hello, we're about to just promote this real quick, but we're going to try it out as well. So this is by this brand called Mount Tracks 5-in-1 Smart Massager, right? Now, like I said, I had it for a minute. I should be shameful of myself because 
I don't even need to know if they're still in business or if their website is still up. But if I find it, I will definitely link it. But I just was like, okay, yeah, a, a smart massager for your face and your scalp, right? Vibration, heat function. So when I got it, you know, I really didn't pay much attention to it. I did take it out the box and look at it. I think I might have even turned it on, but then I just put it back in the thing. was like, okay, well, when I get around to it, that's when I get around to it. Girl, let me tell y'all, okay, if you ain't got one of these, you got to get one of these little smart massages. It got all these different little settings right here, okay? right over here the power button when i tell you this little thing is nifty it really is nifty and then you can make it go faster or slower it felt so good on my scalp so i've been using this you can also have it to where it vibrates you know you change the little setting and it vibrates like pulsates or whatever of course y'all can't feel it it's like a vibrator for your head okay mm -hmm. for the past three days i've been using this so somebody please tell me i'm doing something right because i need my hair to grow back i told y'all i cannot walk around just pray for me, y'all. I really need my hair to grow back. Like, seriously, I really need my hair to grow back. Tuesday, which is tomorrow, actually, I have a over the phone. Um, Because today is Monday. Y'all know that, right? Um, But when y'all watch this, you know it's Wednesday. But Tuesday, I have an over the phone appointment with my doctor. So hopefully she can refer me to a dermatologist so they can take a look and see if there's something that I'm not even noticing. Because, girl, listen, I think I'd rather just lose some sleep than be bald. Like, you ever feel like so, like I said this before, like so unpretty, like I just feel like somebody is doing something to me. And I know that's like that, not the right way to think, but, and I'm, and I'm wrong for thinking like that, but I just felt like did somebody just, and I'm just being honest, like, why is this all happening to me at one time? Like my daughter Tati was like, you know, because you're getting older. Well, shit, just because I'm getting older don't mean I need to fall apart. I feel like you ever watched the movie, The Fly? Like the, you remember the movie, The Fly, right? old movie like from the 80s right i think it was like the late 80s or mid 80s whatever it's called the fly and i forget his real name but he'd be on those commercials for the apartments and stuff you know really nice looking guy um and he's still nice looking as he's aged what the hell is his name but anyway so i'll never forget this the movie he had he had he was a scientist and he made this machine and it was, I think it was to go back in time or some shit. I don't really know what the machine was supposed to do. I don't remember, but he got into the machine that he made, right? And he he had a girlfriend or a wife. I think that was his wife. And she was pregnant. Um, or was she pregnant yet? I don't think she was no, she wasn't pregnant yet. So anyway, he got into this machine that he had made, right? And I can't remember if it was to go back in time or whatever, but he was a scientist. I don't can't remember what it did, but accidentally a fly, an actual insect bug fly, got into the machine too with him. And when he whatever the machine turned on, somehow the fly's DNA or cells got into his body. I you know what I'm saying? So he started turning into the fly. Like as the weeks went on, he started turning into a human fly. And then at the very end of the movie, he started falling apart. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He, like his leg fell off, his ear, his wing fell off. He fell apart. And that's how I'm starting to feel. Like, am I feeling like, okay, my tooth fell out. Okay, it broke off. It was no sign of it even breaking the fuck off. Okay. It fell out. Then my hair is just like drastically falling out. Like it's falling out so quick, like, and so much at one time. It's like, what the hell is going on? And then there is this other thing that I read about when you get to like a certain age, you have like, it's called female pattern baldness. I think that's what it's called, where it gets really, really thin on the top, right? And then all on the sides. And girl, that's what it looks like to me. And I'm like, what the fuck? They got medication for alopecia. And that's like a form of alopecia, they said. I don't know what the fuck it is, but as a woman, sometimes we just go through so much shit. And sometimes that shit that we go through can make us feel so unpretty. And what I tell you, that I feel at times so unpretty, that's how I feel. Sometimes I'll look back at my old pictures, even old videos like last year, two to three years prior, and I'll look at myself and I'll say to myself now, you was complaining about how you looked then and how you were fat then, and now you, you look at yourself and you complain too. Like you had nothing to complain about back then. It's sometimes like, are we never just happy with ourselves? Like seriously, are we never that happy with ourselves that we just constantly, constantly, constantly complain? And I don't even really want to call it a complaint, but it's just an, a strong observation and strong critique to yourself. I just feel like maybe not even just we as women, but do men be going through like really unpretty moments? And I don't even know if 
that's the right word to call it for men, unpretty, un- unhandsome moments, you know what I'm saying? When they feel like, you know what I'm saying, the same way we do. And I'm pretty sure they do, especially when they have lost their hair. But at least if I was a man and I was losing my hair, it might be an easier task. But then again, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be because I don't really know how men that are bald feel or have felt before they lost all their hair or had to just finally result to balding it instead of walking around with that little piece of few strands pulled over. That's how I be feeling sometimes in the morning when I be brushing my hair. Be straight honesty, y'all. Like I be feeling like, you know, little old men, you know, they be having that balding spot and they just take those hairs and they brush them over thinking that that's really going to hide the fact that you're balding, like just cut it the fuck off. That's what you would say, right? That's what I start feeling like sometimes in the morning when I be brushing my hair. No lie. Like, especially in this area right here, like y'all probably can't tell right here because of course I have my hair covering it, but it got so thin, like just so super thin. And I feel like one of those old men like, I feel like, damn, April, you can you can feel your skull. Like, this is what I be saying to myself, shit like that. And I just, I hate to think like, oh, somebody probably is putting a spell on me or some shit. Because I get it. We get old, right? We all get old. It, it's a blessing to get old. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying I'm old, but, you know, I'm 50. But it's a blessing to get 50, to be 50, to be 50 and above. You know, the reason why I'm saying that is because there are some that think that my age is old. You know, you get those 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds who be like, oh, go sit your old ass down when we 50. Like, are you serious? Are you kidding me right now? 50 is old? My 50-year-old ass look a lot younger than some of y'all 20 and 30-year-olds, so let's not even go there. But, you know, it's a blessing to get to this age, right? To me, it is. I'm 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 blessed to get to 50, and I hope to see 50 more, okay? That's how I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I want, if I could be a vampire, well, I don't know about that, but you know what I mean? Like, basically, it's a blessing to get 50. And I know when you get older, sometimes, you you know, your parts don't work like they used to 30 years ago. Of course, right? But damn, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, I see 50 and 60-year-old women, they got a head full of thick-ass hair. I want to be one of those, okay? That's where I want to be. I don't want to be the part of the crew with the other... No, I don't want to be with the bald-headed crew, the thin hair crew. I don't want to be with the ones that have to wear a wig. Like, I don't want to be part of that shit. I mean, I'm still happy every day because I woke the fuck up, but I just feel like I'm... I don't want to say I feel like I'm falling apart, but damn, I just... I'm just feeling really like having like a really unpretty moment and not just right now today, but like for the past couple of weeks, I'm pretty sure you guys can relate to what I'm saying. But other than that, I mean, I've been using that smart massager on my head and it's been feeling really good. That shit feels good. I said to myself, damn, April, you should have been used this. You should have been used this shit. Not because your hair was thin, because I got that shit way before my hair was thinning. I, I swear you guys, I think I had that for like about two years now. I might have to search it up in my email and see how long I've had it. But yeah, I just figured, you know, we're going to do something a little bit different. It's always nice to sit and talk with you guys. You know, seriously, it's always nice to sit and talk with you guys, you know. And I do like to share things that I'll be going through. And I also like to share items that I purchase because I feel like y'all should be interested. I do got a lash video that I post. I made. I had purchased some eyelashes, right? Off of Amazon, because you know I wear the same brand all the time. So I wanted to venture out. I wanted to get me like some different eyelashes. So I made a video of trying them on for you guys. Okay, so I will post that up Thursday tomorrow for y'all to watch. We're gonna get into the real talk, real talk now. I initially did have two to read to you guys today, but I figured I was gonna change it up just a little bit different today and share some things that I wanted to talk about. Okay. But yeah, let's get to this real talk. All right, guys. Vacation. Real talk. Vacation from hell. Hi, April. Divas and Devos. Thank you for reading and listening to my story. Malika. I think that's how you pronounce it. My name is Malika. And April, this has got to be the worst vacation anyone has ever been on in life or in the book of records for the worst vacation. I met this man back in March while out shopping. Nice guy. Works for a stock exchange. Has a nice place of his own. Drives a nice Honda. Drives a nice Honda. You know, well put together. Has a daughter whom is 10, which is really a great kid. I have no kids, but I still accepted him because he seemed like a great person. And his daughter was very well-mannered, 
when she did come around or he brought her rather on our dates, like to places where kids can also enjoy too. So I met him in March and we have spoken long hours on the phone, went out on many of times of dates, slept over each other's place. You know, we was linked in and I was really enjoying the time I was spending with him. So to make the overly long story shorter, let me jump to it. We go on vacation to Brazil. He paid. We stayed at this all-inclusive resort, so everything was within our reach, but we still had the opportunity to leave the resort and venture out if we chose to. We was enjoying ourselves, exploring, talking with the natives, even hanging out with others who was also in the resort. We was at the resort for a little over a week, three nights before we leave, and me and my so-called date was at the bar at the resort, one of the bars and clubs, and there were people there just as well. He starts kicking it with one of the Brazilian women there, chatting it up, dancing, just having a good time, and tells me he's bringing her back to our room to hook up with her. I'm confused, because wasn't he and I hooking up every night since we've been on this vacation? He thought me and him was going to hook up with this Brazilian woman while we was there. So he and I get into a discussion in front of this lady in our room, a heated one, and the woman leaves and he left with her. I guess they both went back to her place because she lives at the resort. She apparently works there. April, the next three days in the resort turned out weird after that with him. He moves his luggage to this lady's place and stays with her until he was until we were supposed to leave. I hadn't seen him the last three days, but tried to call him all those three days. Asked the resort to call him and he would answer for them, but refused to speak to me. April, when it came time to go to the airport, I didn't have my boarding pass because he had it all on his phone since he was the one who paid for it. Long story shorter, he left me stranded in Brazil, didn't communicate with me the time or flight to get, plus didn't give me my boarding pass, didn't even answer my calls or anything. I tried to get my boarding pass through the airport, explain to them what happened, who paid for them, et cetera, and there was nothing they could do. Well, I tell you, I when I tell you I was stranded, I was stranded. My family and I was aware, my family was aware of the issue, meaning my sister and my mother and these and these two women had to raise money through my family in order to get me home. My mother and sister had to my mother and sister had to create a GoFundMe for my family to all chip in and help because I didn't have the funds to get back from Brazil on a last minute flight because it ain't cheap. April, when I got back to the States, this man left all kind of DMs and comments under my pics and what he had to say was nothing nice. All of this because I wasn't trying to have a threesome with him and some Brazilian woman while on vacation. I think from this experience, I will remain single. Now I see what you mean when you say you love your peace and being single. This guy, sadly to say, is 46 years old and I am 48. Who acts like who acts like this in our age group? Thank you, Malika. I don't know if that's the vacation from hell or just maybe one of those that also is from hell. But did she just say that this dude took her on a Brazil a trip to Brazil? Okay, so she's 48 and he's 46. So Malika went on a all-inclusive trip to Brazil paid for by, I guess you want to say that's her man because they've been knowing each other since March. You know what I'm saying? They've been spending time with each other. They've been hanging out with each other. They've been on long hour phone conversations with each other. He even got his 10-year-old daughter around her hanging out with them. So they have like, you know, they got a little relationship going. So I don't know. Do you want to call that a relationship or is it just still dating? I don't, I don't know, but it seems like if you're bringing your kid around somebody, that means you really, really must like them. You got a thing for them, right? Because you just don't want to bring your kid just around anybody. And I would think that a father to a daughter, a girl father would probably be really, really strict about, you know, who's around his daughter because he wants the best for her. So he had to have really liked Malika in order to bring his daughter around her, right? That's that's what I'm thinking. So now y'all are going on vacation to Brazil. Now that's great. You get a paid trip. I, who don't like a nice paid vacation? I know I would. Okay. But you know what? I'm going to go on vacation with you. And I'm going to also make sure that you fucking email me my boarding pass too. Cause ain't nobody about to be playing no games about being stranded nowhere. 
Now, here's the thing. Malika, you should have did yourself the justice of getting your boarding pass from him. Lo and behold, way before you even got on the plane to go on the trip, when you agreed to go on the vacation with him and you agreed to allow him to pay for it, that's when you should have got your boarding pass from him. Some people feel like if you ask for certain things like that, that the other person, the other person, the other party may feel offended because they may feel like, oh, you don't trust me enough. So you want to hold on to your own belongings. It's not about trust, but yeah, I don't trust you to fuck him up. And on top of that, I want to make sure that I get the fuck back. That's nothing to do with you. I understand you pay for a list and I'll pay for my flight if I need be. But yeah, I feel like you really should have asked for your boarding pass, a copy of your boarding pass prior to agreeing to getting on a goddamn plane and going on vacation. Now, here's the thing. Okay, that's some that's some real grimy shit. Okay, can you imagine being on vacation with somebody and y'all sharing a room? Y'all know y'all doing a do like she said. Y'all was what did she say? They was kicking it or whatever. They was they was they was getting down and dirty at the resort every night. Basically, is what she said. And was there a conversation? I don't even think there was a conversation because she seemed kind of stunned. I don't know if it was a conversation or not. Do people just do stuff like this out of the ordinary, like without even there being a conversation like, hey, you want to have a threesome? Like, I don't know if that's the right terminology to use, but I'm just saying, like, wouldn't you want to get the okay from the other person before you just decide to just bring somebody else into the mix of things? I mean, because why would you want to embarrass yourself like that? What if the other person is like totally against stuff like that? And then you don't know that. And then you just bring some random person in the middle of it. And then that person really gets offended and pissed off and mad and angry about the shit because they ain't into that shit at all. So there had to been a conversation about the shit because there's no way that you can just just bring some random girl and be like, yeah, we're going we gonna to hit on her tonight. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't, girl, listen, I don't even know, but I would hope there was like some type of communication, you know, even if it even, even if it wasn't like no real communication, communication, like, you know what I'm saying? Like maybe there was like dirty talk, you know, like they was doing it in the midst of doing it. And she might've said, yeah, I'd like to see you do. And then he might've took it from that. Right. And then decide, well, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring her involved. I don't know. Was it like his dirty fantasy, her dirty fantasy? I don't even know, but there had to be some type of conversation about, you know, threesome. Cause there's no way that I would hope that this man didn't just feel like, well, well, he could have felt like this too. He could have felt like, you know what? I paid for this fucking whole Brazil trip, this all-inclusive fucking resort stay tickets and all. I'm going to give me some, I'm going to give two cootie cats tonight. That's what he said. That's what the fuck he said. That's how he felt. He felt like because he paid for that all-inclusive trip to Brazil, he was going to have you and whoever else he wanted to the likings. I mean, you can't get mad at him, but you can't get mad at him. But it's like, at least he tried. Listen, first of all, the whole point is it was kind of grimy to do to just leave her stranded like that. That's one thing that a person should never do to another person. Like, I get it. You mad. He might have felt his ego might have felt crushed. He might have felt really, really embarrassed because I know if that were me, if my if I was in his shoes, I would definitely feel embarrassed. OK, but I wouldn't feel so embarrassed to the point where I moved my luggage out of the room. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's levels to embarrassment. You know what I mean? There's definitely levels to embarrassment. I'm I'm pretty sure there is. But I don't think I would be that embarrassed to where I'm moving my luggage out. Like, no. And he, he, then he moved his luggage out and stayed with one of the girls that work at the resort. Okay. So he probably had, you know what? His last three days, Malika, believe it or not, might have been full of good times because what you didn't want to involve and partake in, she might have got... The Brazilian lady, she might have got her resort friends that work there also to to join in. You know what I'm saying? They they probably had themselves an American poppy, you know? So I'm pretty sure she wasn't the only one in that room with him. And then I wonder how it works out when you work in one of those resorts. I, I have heard of people that have lived in those resorts because they work there. So I wonder how that works. Do you have like your own? Well, you don't have an apartment. I wonder, do they have an apartment? Maybe, who knows? I mean, how would I know, right? But I wonder, do you have roommates if you do have like an apartment? If it's an apartment, I'm pretty sure they have like a roommate. Either way, she knows some other women that work there and live there as well. So she might have involved them too as well. And you know what they say, okay? Hmm. Well, stays, well, it ain't Vegas, but you know, 
who knows? He just had a good time. I'm pretty sure what you didn't partake in, she probably got one of her little Brazilian mommies to join in on the fun. But neither here nor there. That's kind of like a fucked up vacation. I can't say it was the worst ones because praise God that you got back. Thank God that your family was able to raise funds. And it's kind of fucked up when you think about it because this is my thing. I'm not about to leave out of any country shit. I'm not even leaving out of the fucking state with not enough money in my pocket. Regardless if a person offers to pay for my vacation, I'm I'm going to readily accept, okay, depending on who it is and where we're going. So I can't really say I'm going to accept. So it just depends on who you are because you just can't offer me a vacation like, hey, we're going to go here and... Like, yeah, I'm not just going to agree on it just because it's free, because it might be somewhere where it's freezing cold. And, bitch, I don't want to fucking be nowhere, like, on the North Pole or no shit like that. So, yeah, it all depends, okay? So, but if I do agree to go on a vacation with a person and they, they offer to pay for the entire vacation for me, then I accept the offer, you know what I'm saying? Especially if it's somewhere where I want to go and I'm into that person. I would readily accept the offer. Or even if it was just a family member offering, I'm going to accept the offer, However, just because I accepted a offer from someone doesn't mean I'm going to go if I ain't got no money to, to back me the fuck up, okay? You need to have money in your account. Maybe you did have enough money, but not enough money. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure once her time was up at the resort, she couldn't leave the same day of the, the flight. So she had to get a whole new flight. So God knows how many extra days she had to stay in Brazil, which means it came out of her pocket. So either here nor there, the trip was kind of fucked up. What he did was was definitely wrong, was definitely wrong. But as an adult, we do need to take some type of responsibility and realize we need to ask for our boarding pass as well. So that way you don't rely on that person because you never know. Even if he's not trying to be resentful to you, he could have had something happen to him. You might have got lost. Y'all might have just got separated. So therefore, you, you know what I'm saying? It's still good for you to have your own boarding pass. You just have to take those type of things into account. It doesn't have anything to do with the trust in a person. And then it can, but you also want to take into account, well, you know what? Just in case we get separated during this vacation or what have you, I have my boarding pass and we'll still meet up at the airport. You know what I'm saying? And you are not left behind without. That's just my take on it. kind of man gets that upset that he would do that? Like, that's really, he was, I think he was more embarrassed, and then the, the embarrassment made him get really, really angry or upset. And that's why he decided he was leaving and taking his luggage with him. He was going to leave you in Brazil. And then he's still being real catty and bitchy by leaving you comments. Like, you know what? Just block his ass. And if he continues to do that shit, then girl, I will go file charges against him for being harassment, for harassment. Because now you're stalking me and you're harassing me and you just being an asshole about shit. You already fucking abandoned me in another country. Thank God that you was able to get home. But like, you know what? I hate men that do dumb shit like this or even anybody that's revengeful like you have to be real you got to be real upset if you have to decide to leave somebody in another country that you decided to bring with you on a paid vacation like why would you be that upset like okay we get it you embarrassed yourself chuck it up apologize and keep pushing especially if you're in your 40s you wonder do people act like that at our age group girl yes okay people of our age group ain't all mature girl no mm-mm Sometimes those be the ones that be the most immature, the ones it'd be like, you know what? I think men, I think men be trying to really, really just hold on to their youth and just try to do. I don't know what it is, but I think they be trying to hold on to their youth. And sometimes I think that some of them be acting real petty and real feminine like and I don't mean feminine like, oh, they 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 just you know what I'm saying? Like they act like they just act real feminine with their feelings. Like no, everybody's entitled to feelings. Everybody's entitled to feelings. But the things that they do is like, would a woman even do that to you? Because I don't know about you, but I don't think I would ever want to abandon nobody in another country. Even if you did embarrass me or I made myself feel embarrassed like that. Like if I was in his shoes, I still wouldn't have it in me to leave you in another country. Like I would never do anything like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is up with him? <laughs> you know, I would definitely just block him. But if, he wants to work around and go make other accounts and continue on with the nonsense, then I probably would definitely want to press charges against harassment. Like, yeah, there are very immature people of our age group. You, you would be surprised, okay? Oh, you would be surprised, girl. There are definitely people in our age group that is immature. It's sadly to say that I know, like, at least one or two, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. Anyway, call it a loss. And you know what? Yeah, peace, honey. 
being single is not that bad. I do enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? I actually really do enjoy it. Um, I'm able to, you know, just, you know, it's not even about being at peace because you can find someone in a great relationship and be at peace with them. But I think it has a lot to do with learning to learn yourself. Like, you know, I've, I have my own things that I need healing from. And I just feel like with that being said, it's best for me to be single. And I'm really not interested in finding a relationship or even building a relationship with anybody at this current time, not saying that I won't change my mind, but I like my life the way it is. You know, I get to spend time with my family and I get to just be at peace. I get to do things when April likes to do things. You know what I'm saying? I like the environment that I'm in and the love that's in this environment. So with that being said, I do enjoy my peace, you know, and I do enjoy being single. Never thought I would say that, but yes, I really, really do. Um, But also, you can be at peace with a good person as well. And I feel like for me, I want to be able to find that good person that I can be at peace with, you know. And so for, for the time being, that's the best for me thing to do would be to be single. So that's what I'm doing, being single and enjoying my time to myself, learning to learn myself and know myself. And ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. But you guys, I'm going to go, you know, leave Malika some info, some comments, some suggestions down below. Or what would you have done in a situation? OK, if someone decided to pay for your full vacation, inclusive vacation, I need somebody to pay for my vacation. Mm -hmm. I would love somebody to do that. But anyway, I love you guys and everything will be down in the description box below.